Okay, well, well, hi everyone, everyone. my name is Kate, Kate as Hannah introduced, and my colleague Hannah and I would, would like, like to firstly thank, thank, you, thank you for joining us in this short introduction to Historic England's new audio system. system. Um, um, so, so first off, I'll, I'll give an overview of what both active participation and segmentation are, and why they're so important to us, and then Hannah will talk in more detail about the segmentation system that we've just launched. We've only just shared the system internally at Historic England so far. Well, but we're planning to roll the free version of it out to the heritage sector, sector for more working later in the year. Um, um, so, so this is therefore a sneak preview and it's our first presentation to an audience outside of historic England. England. So, so please be kind, kind and know that we're really interested to hear your honest feedback. feedback. Hannah, can and you go to the next slide please? Okay, okay, so, so to start, uh, I'd like to share the strategic context in which we're delivering our new approach. Historic England's future strategy was launched last year and it sets out our vision, which is for a heritage that is valued, celebrated and shared by everyone. A key area of focus within the future strategy is our work to improve active participation and that's the pink document that's shown here on the screen. It sets out how we aim to increase participation in heritage through working with more and a more diverse range of people to champion and protect the historic environment. So when we say active participation, we mean acting in whatever way on behalf of the historic environment, whether it's uh, campaigning for a local listed pub, taking part in a dig, right down to the smaller and what we call more everyday acts of heritage, like visiting a historic property or retweeting one of our tweets and sharing that um, but crucially to make that success we need to create more opportunities for people to connect with heritage in ways that are relevant to them so our new audience system therefore organizes our broad range of audiences into uh, practical groups which can help us understand who is the most appropriate for us to work with where to find them what we want to say and ask of them and what it is that will inspire them to get more involved Next slide, Next slide um, so, so, as, as a, a non-departmental body, body, our audiences, as you can imagine, are very diverse as we represent a need to deliver public benefit to, to everyone in England. Uh, we therefore have a duty to engage with the broadest population of England, while, as you can imagine, in historic England, we've also got some very niche specialist audiences too. So because of this, we can't therefore treat everyone as one homogenous mass, since clearly one size doesn't fit all. But we also can't afford to tailor our services for every single individual. We do, however, want to better understand our audiences, to be able to reach them on their terms and in the places that they frequent, rather than expecting them to come to us. So for this, we use segmentation to create groups of audiences with distinct shared characteristics or needs. There are numerous ways to create segments, uh, which has evolved over time and their sophistication. At Historic England, we elected to use a values-based approach, and this means it's based on people's core beliefs rather than any other factor that you can see lower down the scale. Um, Values-based systems are a better place to support behaviour change because the systems earlier in the diagram, demographics, geography, lifestyle, past behaviour, they don't necessarily reflect where you are now and they can readily change. But this type of system gives us a more granular and human tool to meet our audience needs and gives us options beyond programming based purely on demographics. Things like upbringing, circumstances and demographics have been, have been proven to definitely correlate with levels of participation in the historic environment. But they're influenced by really long established privileges that have historically been available to some but not to others. So things like wealth, education, green space and healthcare. And our ambition is to reverse this. Um, and in our ambition, we're challenging ourselves to work with and co-create with an increasingly diverse group of people within the population. And this is why demographics should be the target, but not necessarily the tool that guides our execution. Um, so here's an example. Um, for example, if the aim is to engage more young men with, from lower social grade groups in the historical environment, Without segmentation, we might design and program options assuming that all young men from lower social grade groups want exactly the same thing. But with segmentation, you'd have a spread of all of the demographics across each segment, but some would be more closely aligned. 
So you choose a target segment and build your programming around their values and interests first and then target it to a specific demographic. I'm now going to hand over to Hannah to introduce our segment. Great. Um, so, yeah, let's um, have a look at the segments that, um, as Kate said, we've just rolled out at HE and that we're planning to roll out to the wider heritage sector for free uh, later in the year. So these are our segments on the right hand side here. And just as a reminder, as Kate said, um, our segments are a way of defining someone's mi mindset. So they give us an understanding of how they see the world and how the historic environment and heritage fits within that. And our segments are defined by core beliefs and values. And whilst our behaviour varies from day to day, who we are as people is slower to change. And our seven segments represent the heritage values of the population at large. And you can see that they're sat here on a comparative scale. So I'm not sure whether you can see the detail here, but on the horizontal axis, on the left-hand side, we have I tend to like traditional things, and it moves across to the right-hand side to I tend to like modern things. And then on the vertical axis we have on the top, I have a real passion for history or heritage. Down to the bottom, I have a little interest in history or heritage. And then we have our seven segments. And our seven segments have each been assigned a colour and contain three descriptors to further introduce who they are. So I'll just run you through them quickly to give you an overview and, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the development opportunities there are for each of the segments. So we have pink and they're cultured, open-minded, fascinated, green, they love nature, active, discovery, yellow, progressive, creative, social, Purple, uh, nostalgic, traditional, protective. Red, we have escapists, enjoyment, people who love trips out. Orange are mainstream, they're very proud. R family is important to them. And blue, dynamic, passionate and outgoing. I'm not expecting you to remember all that now, um, but that gives you an overview of how we're looking at that. Then, um, What's really important about our segments, all of our seven segments, is that we can use them to plan audience development strategies. And there are opportunities for us to engage with all of the different segments in different ways. And so what we've outlined here is an overall picture of how we might target different segments as a route to engaging more diverse audience. So there, there aren't any um, missed opportunities within our segments. And we just need to think strategically about how we might want to reach and target each of the different ones. So what we've done to help us think about that is split the segments into diff different opportunities for development. So we have our core segments. So those are pink and green. So pink and green are those people who are already really interested in history and heritage. They're already highly um, active within the historic environment and, um, and many already work within the sector. It's not a particularly diverse group and um, with many identifying as white and um, many educated to degree level, but this is an audience that is really engaged and really wants to hear more diverse audiences um, within the sector. And so there's a real opportunity for us to reach out to these audiences and share more um, diverse stories and histories. Then we have yellow. So that's what we've termed our stretch segment. So these are people who would, uh, be really interested in cultural and socially driven opportunities. So they would um, be already be visiting museums and galleries and libraries, but they haven't necessarily made that step and connection to heritage. So there's a real opportunity then for us as a sector to reach out to those people to demonstrate why our work might be relevant of interest to them and particularly engage with their interest in um, diverse history and heritage. And then we have four opportunity segments. So as you can see on the graph, these are people who are a little bit further away on the graph in terms of having that real passion for history or heritage yet, um, or kind of um, and maybe more of an interest in traditional things. And there are different opportunities within each segment um, for us to engage with them. So I'm going to run those um, through them quickly. Obviously, we don't have a lot of time this morning, but I'm just going to give you an overview so you can kind of start to understand how we're approaching this. So purple, so those are the people who are nostalgic, traditional, protective, and they're really proud already of England's heritage and the countryside. Um, but they're people who would feel more comfortable with um, activities they already know rather than looking for new experiences. So we as a sector need to really reach out to those people and offer them solutions they can access locally or from home. Then we have red and orange and they're kind of closer together on the graph here. Those are people for whom home and family life, life are really important and that's what tends to drive their decision making. They don't really yet have strong opinions relating to heritage and they tend to engage most strongly with 
mainstream news um, and traditional outlets and large national organizations. So we might want to think about how we can reach them through mainstream partnerships, um, media, news stories, etc., and thinking about how we can engage directly with their interests, particularly related to home and family life in their local communities. And then we have Blue, um, who are our final opportunity segment, and they are our largest segment, in fact, and um, they are as said here, it's dynamic, passionate, outgoing. They're really uh, fascinated by uh, technological developments. They want to try and improve the world around them. They're really proactive in embracing social change. Um, but at the moment, heritage doesn't mean very much to them. And um, they're looking uh, for experiences to spend um, with their friends. So if we wanted to think about how we might reach this segment, we'd be needing to demonstrate um, developing partnerships, perhaps with organizations that matter to them, but also reaching out and thinking about their existing interests because they are interested in untold histories, in um, black histories, in LGBTQ plus histories. So there are some opportunities again, to reach out um, to this audience. So these are our, um, these are our segments. There's a huge amount of data that sits behind all of this information and we don't have the time in a 15 minute presentation to go into all the detail. But for each of the segments that we have, each, um, each color segment has what we call a pen portrait. So that's two pages essentially of data and insight that brings them to life and demonstrates the different opportunities um, that we have to reach them and um, how we might go about doing that. So. Um, what I'm going to do is just look in detail at one of the pen portraits that I think holds most resonance for the archaeological sector, which is yellow, which is our stretch segment. So this is how um, the first uh, page of how the pen portraits look. And I'm first just going to talk you through the information that we have. So this same information, as you can see, lots of data and insight here, is available for all the different segments. So I'll talk you through that, and then I'm going to pull out a few little um nuggets of information that I think might be particularly interesting. So we start on our first page with an overview on the left hand side here. So we, we introduce who these people are, the number, the number of specialists that you might find within this segment, and then this um, lower um, left hand box at a glance is a really good place to start when you're looking through the segments because it gives you an overview of all the insight we have and you can use that as a kind of jumping off point to get an introduction to see whether what themes might interest these people, what the barriers to reaching them are, how they feel about the environment, diversity, what level of participation they might have. And then you can um, dive off into the different areas and kind of um, explore in more depth. Then in the middle column, we have more insight about the lifestyle, their values, their profile. We also have um, in this version information about historic England's role. Obviously, when we're rolling this out to the sector, we'll be adapting this to um, remove the information that's um, particularly focused on historic England and making sure that the data is um, uh, relevant to um, the sector more widely. Then we have what role heritage plays for them. So we can start to understand what elements particularly are interest for them and what the motivations and barriers might be. In the final, um, uh, bottom right hand corner we have some little clusters here that start to understand where their kind of levels of interest are that this for example for yellow they're particularly community minded they're very environmental and forward looking then on the second page we have a bit more of the depth on some of those themes that we were talking about so um, as Kate was talking about um, the work on active participation so understanding to what level these people are already um, participating in heritage and historic environment and what the opportunities are and how we might drive and increase that low participation. Again I'm going to talk a little bit more detail on the next slide and just pull out some of the data that I think is relevant um, for this sector. Then we have information about diversity, we're talking about the climate crisis and then finally really importantly how can we reach these people? So how can we engage them? What are the themes that might interest them? What, what, what should we say and where would we say it? Again some of this information um, because this is uh, we've just rolled this out internally some of the language is very focused on HE but when we'll be providing this data um, more widely obviously we'll be reflecting um, uh, the wider sector in the language. So um, I just thought I would pull out a few little bits um, in the yellow segment because there are some uh, real connections to your sector here and particularly in this top right hand corner so what role does heritage play for them and we can see here that they're really interested in secret hidden histories they're fascinated by discovery and obviously um, with archaeology there's some real connection there and in fact we can see that when asked what for them is heritage archaeological sites come up pretty high on that list 
We also have this section in the bottom left hand corner of the second page, which talks about specialism. So we have an additional level of insight in the segments, which tells us um, how many specialists are in the sector. So in the, le the yellow segment, there are quite a lot of, they have quite a high uh, connection, um, specialist connection to heritage. And that might be through education. So they may be teachers or students. Um, but because they have this motivation for discovery, there's also a high proportion of archaeologists, archaeologists within the segment. And we can see, again, the themes that start to drive participation. So there's untold hidden histories, um, stories of oppression, those hidden stories that might um, bring this to life for them. And finally, I also um, just wanted to flag the interests um, that we might want to tap into with this. So there's minority histories, women histories, women's history, immigration histories, hidden secret histories, and a history of ideas. So that's a whistle-stop tour through a pen portrait. Um, there's a huge amount of data. There's very rich, nuanced um, segments, and um, but hopefully it gives you an overview of what is available and um, what we'll be providing later. So um, I thought then we could just quickly touch on exactly what we're planning to do. So um, as Kate said at the top, we've um, just launched this. We've um, launched this internally at Historic Moon. We've had some really positive feedback from our teams, and we are um, uh, making sure and trying to embed it across all our work that we're using our segments. Um, and then we also are planning ahead, and we would really love to roll um, a version of the segments out to the heritage sector. And this would be something we'd be offering for free, the information. And so at the moment we're doing, uh, we're testing that. And so this uh, is our first, as Kate said, our first presentation external audience. And we're also going to start um, working on some case studies to see how um, how best the, what, how, what the best information is that we can provide. So we're working with the CBA and hoping to use the segments for the Festival of Archaeology this summer. We're also sharing our insights and plans with GCMS as they look um, at their audience development work. And then later in the year, we're rolling it out to the sector. And um, we would really love to hear whether it's in, um, if we have time for some questions now or in the chat, um, we'd love to hear from you um, about how segmentation might work for you and your audiences and whether there are any um, case studies that you might want to share or whether you would um, Think you might benefit from working with us the tools you might need um, and also whether there are any case studies of active participation um, that you already are aware of because we're also developing a big kind of bank of um, case studies around that as well um, so um, I've got um, an email address we'll put at the end and um, so we may not have lots of time now but um, we'd also be really happy to put this conversation up and um, talk afterwards and just to say that these case study the data that we have is um on our on our segments is already very um there's a huge amount of depth there but as we use them as we develop more case studies they'll become even richer and more nuanced and that'll the data will become even stronger and that means that the data that we can share for everyone will be stronger and um that will also enable us to uh, develop our thinking on how we can target people and reach and inspire more people to um, actively participate in the historic environment.